guys, welcome to chapter, I'm oh, sorry, fourth grade, chapter 10, lesson seven. We're going to go ahead and get started with number two. It wants us to draw a line or decide whether something has a line of symmetry. A line of symmetry means that you can fold it in half in any way and it will be exactly the same. So if I lay my hands like this, fold them in half, they're the same. That's symmetry. Okay. If you draw a circle, you can cut it in half, it's the same. A square, same thing, okay? So, I want us to decide if there's one line or more than one line, or zero, one line, or more than one line, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, I could cut that right down the middle. I could also cut it right down the middle here. And I could also cut it right down the middle there or there. So there's a bunch of lines of symmetry there. So we're gonna put more than one. Okay, on the next one, I cannot fold this in any way that is going to get me exactly where I want to be, exactly the same on both sides, okay? If I were to fold this this way, then this corner would be down here. If I were to fold it this way from the top down, then this would be down here. There's just no good way to do that. So, zero, okay? All right. Now, this, okay, a pentagon, you can, I could fold it right there and do it, okay? I could also fold it. Oh, right here, right here. Nope, not right there. Not right there. Sorry, y'all. Okay. Okay. So on here, our book says there's more than one. I don't see another way to split that. But our book says there's more than one. So maybe if we just did it that way, or something close to that, then if we did it, in any case, we're gonna write more than one, okay? Okay, the next one, we need to decide if there's a line of symmetry in it, yes or no. All you need to do is yes or no, okay? Obviously a square, we could do that a bunch of different ways, so yes, okay? All right, on the next one, if we were to split it like this, we would have a line of symmetry. If we were to split it like that, we would have a line of symmetry if it was a straight line. Obviously, Nifli is not an artist. So, yes, we're good, okay? This one, there's not a good way to split that where it's gonna give us a line of symmetry. I can't cut it any way that's gonna give us a line of symmetry, so no, okay? And this one, if I cut it right there, that's a line of symmetry. So, yes. Okay. All right. We are going to draw a shape to fit the statement. So, zero lines of symmetry. Boom. You could draw one of these. You could draw one of those. You could draw anything you want that's going to give you a line of symmetry. Okay. So, one line of symmetry. Well, that's a line of symmetry right there. So let's draw a triangle. Okay. Two lines of symmetry. Well, let's draw a rectangle. Then we would have there and there. Okay. All right. We're going to use the chart. It says which number or numbers appear to have only one line of symmetry. All right. Well, I could split this this way and this this way. So that's not only one, okay? A two, there's no way for me to split that. It's kind of like this J shape up here. There's no way for me to split that and get a line of symmetry. Now, a three, I could cut it right on the bump. That would give me a line of symmetry. There's not a good way for me to do that with four or five or six. Eight, 
it looks like there's two lines of symmetry and no on nine. Okay, so it's just going to be a three. Okay, which number or numbers appear to have two lines of symmetry? Well, that's going to be the zero and the eight. Okay, all right, we're going to go on to the back where you guys are going to do the lesson check and we're going to do the style review together. Okay, so Richard practiced each of three piano solos for five twelfths of an hour. Expressed in simplest form, how long did he practice in all? Okay, well, three piano solos. Okay, so we're going to have five twelfths and we're going to have three of those. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. So now, okay, the denominator stays the same. And then we just add the top. Well, 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15. Okay? Well, here's the thing. We can reduce 15 over 12 by 3. Okay? So, if we divide 15 by 3, we get 5. And if we divide 12 by 3, we get 4. Okay? That's still not simplest form, though, because the top is bigger than the bottom. So four goes into five. You absolutely, if you want to, you can do this math. I'm just not going to. I'm going to do it mentally. I'm going to go four goes into five one time. One times four is four. So five minus four is one. And I keep my denominator. One and a quarter hours. Okay. Write a decimal that is equivalent to three and ten hundredths. All right. Well, so three is my whole number. And I need ten with my last number ending in the hundredths spot. So that's the second spot, okay? Now, if I've got a one there, then that's one hundredth. So if I were to do this, then I have three with 10 and it ended in the hundredth spot. That's all I gotta do, okay? You could have 3.1, that's fine, okay? But ending in the hundredth spot, put that zero in, okay? Lynn used three eighths of a cup of flour and a third cup of sugar for a recipe. What number is a common denominator for eight and three, okay? Well, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and 30. And then I'm gonna go eight, 16, 24. Oh, look at that. So 24, okay? You could also multiply eight and three and get 24, okay? Kevin draws a figure that has four sides. All four sides have the same length. His figure has no right angles. What figure does Kevin draw? Well, we can't draw a square because that has all right angles. So the only other thing that we could draw would be a diamond or a rhombus. Is it a, is the math term for a diamond, is a rhombus. Okay, all right, y'all. Thanks for hanging out for 10.7. Come on back for 10.8. See you soon.